This is the 10th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology network attached storage device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In our previous video, we created a number of shared folders, finance, homework, manuals, public, and software. For this video, we are going to take a look at how you set access permissions for these folders using something called groups. At the moment, while we have created a number of shared folders, only the administrator accounts on our NAS have any sort of access to them. So in order for us to make our shared folders accessible to our network users, we will need to set permissions. For our home network, we will be using three permission types, read only, read write, and no permission. If we were to give a user read only permissions to a shared folder, that user would be able to view the contents of that shared folder and open any files contained within the folder. The user would be able to copy a file or folder to a different location, but they would not be able to delete or change the contents of any of the files or folders contained within the folder share. Read-write permissions will allow a user to not only access the contents of a shared folder, but also create files and subfolders within that share. A user with read-write access to a shared folder is able to delete, save to, rename, edit, or overwrite a file or folder stored within the folder share. Finally, we have no access permissions which as the name suggests, will prevent an unauthorized user from accessing a shared folder. When we set permissions to a shared folder, we assign permissions either on an individual basis or via something called a group. A group is simply a collection of users who need the same level of access to a service or network share. By using groups rather than assigning permissions on a user-by-user -user basis, we have a more elegant way for a system administrator to ensure that large groups of people all have the correct access and permissions to a network system. As our NAS will be used within a small home network, we will only have to deal with a few user accounts, so in theory we should be able to assign access permissions on an individual basis. However, so that we can ensure that each of our users will be assigned with the correct access permissions, we have decided to use groups. For our example, we created a fictitious family of four people, to which we created two groups, a group for users who deal with household matters such as finance and home maintenance, and a more general group for the whole of our fictitious family. The first group is a household management group and will have read-write permissions over both the finance and manuals folders, while the second group, called family group, will have no access to finance, read-write access to homework, and read-only access to the manuals and software folders. The final network share, public, will need to be accessible to all user accounts created on our NAS, so we will need to edit a default group called users. As a user can be in more than one group, the adults of our family will be in both the household management group and our family group, while the children of our example family will only be in the family group. Both of the groups that we'll be creating will only have read access to the software folder. As we are continuing from where we left off in our previous video, you can see that we're currently viewing shared folders from within the control panel of Disk Station Manager. If we select the option Group, which is under File Sharing, you can see that there are three default groups, Administrators, HTTP, and Users. Let's highlight Administrators and select Edit. If we now select the Permissions tab, we can see the permissions for this group. You can see that the Administrators group correctly has full read-write permissions over all of the shared folders that we created in our previous video. Let's now open the users group and review its permissions. As you can see, the user group has no access rights to any of the shared folders we created. However, as we want our public share to be accessible to any user who has a user account on our NAS, 
we will be assigning our user group with read-write permissions over the public shared folder. When we select OK, our change to the user's group will be saved. Now let's create our first group. If we select the Create button, the Group Creation Wizard is displayed. To create a group, we must first give it a name. While the name you give a group is not that important, it does help to make it descriptive. When we select Next, we're shown the shared folders we can assign different permissions to. As this group was created for users who deal with household finance and maintenance, we will only be assigning read-write permissions to the finance and maintenance folders. You may have noticed that the users in this group do not have access permissions to all of our shared folders. This is because when we include the users of this group in other groups, they will inherit the permissions from those groups. For example, remember when we edited the users group to allow that group to have read-write access over the public folder. As all user accounts on our NAS have to be in the users group, all users will have read-write access over the public folder. So while we have not assigned read-write access permissions to the public folder in the group that we are creating, all users in this group will inherit read-write permissions to the public folder because they are also in the users group. This may seem complicated, but once you understand how the groups you create work, it should make assigning permissions easier. Let's select Next. User Quota Settings allows us to limit the amount of storage space that this group can use on our NAS. As we currently do not wish to set a data storage limit, we will simply select Next. Assign Application Permissions allows the users in this group to have access to applications running on the NAS, but for now we will be leaving these settings in their default state. The final option is Group Speed Limit Settings, which allows us to control the amount of bandwidth that a user in this group can use over our network when accessing specific services. When we select Next, we're asked to confirm the setting options that we have chosen for this group. Having reviewed the setting options, we can select Apply to create the group. Let's now create our second group. This group will be called Family Group, as it will be the default group for anyone who is part of our fictitious family. Within Assign Share Folder Permissions, we will give the family group read-write access to our homework folder, while manuals and software will have read-only access. A user in this group will not have access to finance unless they are also in the household management group. Again, we will leave quota set to disabled, leave assign application permissions set to their defaults and not limit the upload and download speed of file services. When we select next, we are asked to confirm the settings for the group that we are about to create. By clicking on apply, we create our second group. With our two new groups now created, we're ready to add users to the groups and assign permissions to our shared folders. So to recap, in this video we provided a summary of the permissions and groups that we would create. We then created two groups on our NAS and assigned folder permissions to those two groups. In the next video in this series we're going to take a look at how you add user accounts to our two new groups so that we can give users of our NAS access to our network shared folders.